Hey guys, I'm Nick. And I'm Rachel. And welcome to The Great Adventure. So we've been this in our house for a couple months now, but we're still trying to give you guys some RV related content. And today we're actually highlighting some of the biggest mistakes that we made while full timing. Uh, we had what, 14 and a half months of on the road. Yep. And there were definitely a lot of mistakes made. Uh, we did a lot of good things. Right. Unfortunately, there are some things that we had to learn and, as we were doing it. Yep. Yeah, but they make for good stories. Though, as you sit around yeah. the campfire this and share with other full-time or even part-time RVers, there's always a good story. And so here we go, five of our biggest mistakes, not really in a particular order, but five of the mistakes that we made on the road that hopefully you can avoid um, to make things go a little smoother on your travels. The first one that we're going to be highlighting is uh, for those who do have travel trailers, and this could apply to people with fifth wheels as it well, could, is yeah. dropping or nearly dropping the trailer mm -hmm. on multiple occasions. <laughs> we did drop ours completely once and almost dropped it, what, once or... It wasn't completely. We, we caught it. I mean, it. It, the, it was the pretty much there. caught it, right? Yeah. yeah so... <laughs> Um, for those who don't know, travel trailers can move back and forth if the tires right. aren't fully secured in place. Uh, we did have wheel chocks Right, uh, those for yellow those ones tires. that everybody buys and <clears throat> sticks in there, they were in there. Unfortunately, a couple different occasions we were on wet ground or sandy, sandy ground yeah. in Florida mm -hmm. and the wheel chocks simply didn't hold. Uh, so after doing that multiple times, we decided to get the <laughs> X chocks. Yes for our travel yep. trailer, which are uh, chocks that put pressure right between the two tires so that they can't move left or right, right no matter. Right, the metal X ones that go right between the tires. Yeah, so yeah. it doesn't matter if you're, the trailer's tilting forward or tilting back, you don't even need to worry about that. Simply place them in between. Uh, and it was a lifesaver. Once we got that, we never had issues again. No, except for the time that we were in a rush because we were blocking traffic as we were unhitching and we forgot to put them in. Yeah, we, we forgot there, to put them in. And there My they, fault. <laughs> there it went. My it started fault. going down again. So they are absolutely key. So uh, those, priority number one, whenever you're setting up camp, you have a travel trailer, make sure that your wheels. wheels are completely locked into place. Yeah. Uh, we never had any damage related to dropping the trailer. I mean, the, the no, couple the, times like that we did stabilizer. drop, it was a couple inches and things started moving. We were able to catch it in time, yeah. uh, but there can there be some serious... There was a handprint series. on the side of the RV for <laughs> from holding hand. up the he trailer. He was holding it up until somebody graciously came and helped uh. to get things back in order. Yeah, that's... So make sure you have your wheels locked anytime so that you don't drop the yep. trailer. Yep. Uh, another mistake that we made while on the road was faithfully trusting Google Maps. Um, we always had in driving and it, it never really led us astray. I'll well, say this, Google Maps is amazing excellent. when it comes to directions. Yes. But one thing that I wish, well, there's a couple things that we wish Google Maps had. Uh, just being able to set in your default speed so that your times yeah. are correct in Google Maps. But other than that, it's pretty good. Right. Until you get to the points where you're going up a six and a half to seven percent incline right. in order to get over right. a mountain to get to your campground. Yeah, so we started in the southeast of the U.S., which there are some hills, there are some mountains, but nothing really that big. Um, we got until we got to New York. We got in you know, further, not completely upstate New York, but we were in New York and headed into a Thousand Trails campground, and I mean, it was a steep. It was great on a small road. Seven and a half percent grade incline right, over right. this massive mountain and yeah. and then <laughs> once we got to the bottom of it or the top we were going down well, we're well, going down. two things to the top of it so we had the incline at the very top of that then there was this crossing bridge that was ten and a half feet high and we were that fortunate 11. Enough, or 11, 11 feet high right we 11. were fortunate enough our RV with our with the air conditioner on top, we missed it by about three inches. <laughs> we actually had somebody with us who we sent out on the bridge with a walkie and they were going to tell us if we weren't going to make it. So yeah. we creeped along. We made so it. So that's one of the things Google Maps doesn't yeah. offer. The it bridge doesn't, clearance the bridge and the elevation. Elevation changes, things like that. There are a handful of other alternatives out there that are yeah. on uh, the, the, the app, app stores, stores mm -hmm. that you can buy buy or for free, which tell you the differences in elevation changes, uh, yeah. low bridges or 
uh, things like that that you definitely need to make, pay attention to. So once we did that, that was what, three months in? Yeah. Uh, once we did that, we were like, yeah, Google Maps is yeah. just one of the things that we look at right. when, when we're planning our travel When you're ready days. to head out, you've got to check your time and your elevation and for those clearances. Along with that mistake, we also found out something else that we were doing wrong. Um, going down that steep grade, um, we parked, so we got all set in, in the campground, and as we were driving, our brakes were squeaking and we had to take it in and take the truck in to figure to out our, what was going get on. get our brakes replaced. The brake pads. Completely gone. Shot. So the reason for that was uh, when we were looking for a truck, there were models that did have a brake control system built in for, uh, for a trailer that's hooked up to the back. Uh, the one we eventually purchased, unfortunately, did not. Uh, well, we the newer model did. year <laughs> did. And so we didn't think that we needed to do anything. No. And that's when we found out need to make sure if your vehicle does have a brake control <laughs> control system built in right uh it keeps you safer you it oh, allows yeah. you to control the brakes of the trailer independently if needed but then also going down steep grades or getting off the freeway when you're going 70 miles an hour mm -hmm. and need to come to a complete stop within you know a couple yeah, hundred it's yards absolutely it's, needed for safety is definitely necessary yeah, and we had no idea we were going <clears throat> without it up until that point yeah and they do cost between 80 and 200 dollars depending on which version you buy but honestly it's, it does save you money in the long run because you're not completely killing right. the brakes on your trailer right. or on your truck uh, so definitely keep that in mind we made the mistake thinking our truck had it built in yep. which it did not so make sure you double check that yep. and then moving on from yeah, that the next mistake that we made was just over planning um, I'm a planner by nature. I like to have things in order. I like to know for sure we're going to get into a campground in a specific time and to know where we're going. Um, but we found that as we got going and we were, we had like specific events to get to or a family member to yes. see here or a friend we wanted to catch up with there, which was great to have those plans. But those it gaps in between. changed everything that we had to do. Yeah, we didn't so have as much freedom. So we planned, you know, being able to get up to Canada for a specific time period to meet up with some friends. So between our time periods of being in Florida and getting up to Canada, we're like, hey, we have a one and a half months. What can we see in one and a half months? Right. And plan along that route. And then kind of the same getting to Minnesota. We wanted to spend some good time in Minnesota to see old family and friends. Same thing. And then Thanksgiving in California. And so we had all these different like yeah. plans, like three, three months out from each other and we're just trying to cram everything in as quickly as possible, it just doesn't It We it, made it work, yeah, it works. but it wasn't as enjoyable as possible because you get to areas a lot of times and you don't know what to expect. And then no. you're there for, you plan it for five days and then you realize, oh my gosh, I need to I be here to be two here weeks. Right. But we already have reservations right. at four other right. campgrounds lined up, which is good, but Right, or the opposite. You get to a location that everybody's talked about and you think it's going to be amazing I mean, and then like, you get yeah. there and like, eh, yeah, I'm kind of ready to move on, but you don't have reservations for a few more days. So just learning to be flexible, having even more flexibility, yeah. just trusting and knowing in that it's going to be all right if you don't have everything set in stone, which leads us to our final well, one. Okay. With that though, like a lot of people worry about not being able to get reservations at campgrounds and unless it's like july through august and you're visiting all the major national parks right. those are the only times where you might have difficulty getting campground reservations any other time of the year and if not those specific areas we had no issues right. whatsoever right. getting in, into the campgrounds yeah. that we wanted winter in florida or summertime just about anywhere yeah. other than that no there they weren't crowded it wasn't yeah. hard to get into which leads us into this last one is um we wish that we would have boondocked more yeah. Um, with planning everything out and having everything in order and everything lined up ready to go, there wasn't even really room to try boondocking other than Walmart on a travel day it was about all the boondocking we were doing in the beginning. So Yeah, we did a couple boondockers welcome boondocking at yep. people's houses yep. and those turned out really well. Yep. Uh, we actually didn't do that much outside of the East Coast. There was actually more of those on the East Coast there than were, there were yep. other areas. Yep. But once we got out west, we were more worried about making sure we had a secure spot for our trailer when mm -hmm. we were staying, you know, four to eight days in different locations. And it took us a while to actually experiment with mm -hmm. boondocking, even at campgrounds or like right. state parks that didn't have full hookups. So, you know, fake boondocking. Yeah. 
if you will. Uh, but we actually really enjoyed it once we did. Yes. Our, we had built yeah. out our travel trailer so that we could do it. I think the longest we went was eight or nine days. Right, during without the hookups. Balloon, balloon Fiesta was our longest stretch. Before that, we had tried it a little at Tetons and somewhere else. We also had a little hiccups in getting our solar really fully ready yeah, to go. Yeah, but that, that really wasn't that, the reason. Wasn't. We, we simply loved to plan things out yep, going back we to the previous so point so over scheduled yeah that i mean one of one of our favorite places was boondocking in california on the beach right and being right on the sand mm -hmm. being able to see the sunset every night watching dolphins swim by mm -hmm. and you know just being able to enjoy that you know out out of nature or out in nature experience yeah. without having to be necessarily yeah. at a campground was spectacular yeah. i mean we honestly wish we would have done that a lot more yeah. and once we hit the road again yeah probably. i think again as we get out we will take more advantage of the blm land the yes. bureau of land management just the free um, campsites that are available a lot of those are really close to the closer to the national parks than campgrounds you might be able to get into i think i was fearful and worried that we would get to that spot and they would be full there'd be tons of boondockers there and we'd never get in um, and again, I don't know during the summer months when most people are out camping, that's a yeah, good possibility. Yeah, and we were around that air, most of those areas in kind of the peak season, so maybe. Um, but I think in the future we will definitely take advantage yeah. of BLM land and just more um, boondocking because it's it's not as it's not scary like i, <laughs> I think rachel we had some fear that just that unknown someone right? would steal our trailer I don't know. or we'd be attacked in the nighttime <laughs> in the middle of nowhere it never happened and probably no never and we have will. plenty of friends who are doing it constantly yes. um and everything's working out just fine so we do wish we would have been back more so those are our quick five yep. biggest mistakes that we made while full timing mm -hmm. there are a lot of other oh my gosh so many smaller mistakes <laughs> but honestly like it leads to a learning experience Absolutely. and great stories when you're you're sharing things with friends and family about mm -hmm. hey guess what went wrong today <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching if you have other mistakes that you've made or that you have yeah. heard feel free to We'd drop them to in the comments stories. share yeah. your stories um, just being able to get insight from other people is always beneficial for us, mm -hmm. but also everyone that's watching these videos as well. So thank you so much for contributing to the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.